Good night. So, did you know that the parrotfish eats pieces of coral and poops out one grain of sand? So little by little, parrotfishes create whole beaches. So really, if you think about it, white sandy beaches are actually made up of fish poop. Real talk. So, you know and I know that the beach is actually quite a complex ecosystem. And it's not really only made up by the parrotfish pooping. But none of us can dispute that small parrotfishes place and rule in creating the beach. Truthfully, in this energy environment, all of us will have a role to play. And frankly, none of it will get done unless all of us understand the roles that we each have to play and play them well. From what I've observed, the utility understands its role and is playing it. The regulator, the policy makers, and the civil society groups like BRIA, they all understand their roles. And even the small residential customer, like you and me, we will have a role to play. But do we understand our role? Do we understand the influence and the power that we have in this changing energy space? Well, one thing is for sure, we'll all have to poop like our lives depend on it. So contrary to popular belief, I'm not a utility exec 24 hours a day. I know, shocker. Contrary to popular belief, I do go home. I have a family, I have friends, I do. Um, I have children, I have a husband. And contrary to popular belief, I also am one of the 130,000 customers of Barbados Light and Power. And I do pay an electricity bill every month. Roger Blackman, he can, he can vote for me. <laughs> but I say that because whenever I go anywhere and I say I work for Light and Power, people always say, you don't pay for electricity. And that's not true. We do pay bills. So as a customer, I wonder, what do all these changes mean for me? Will it mean that my bill is going to go through the roof? Will it mean that I won't have a reliable electricity service anymore? All of these investments that have to occur, who's going to pay for all of this? I don't have solar PV panels on my roof, and I don't own an EV yet. But does that mean that I'm being left behind? So I have all these questions. And I wondered, what about you? How do you feel about all the changes? How do you feel? Do you have questions? So I'll share with you how I feel. And by the way, this is me. This, see, the hair? That's me. <laughs> so on the one hand, I'm really excited by all of the changes. I am. I think about the infinite possibilities for us as a country. I think about the jobs that will be created that maybe some of them don't, don't even exist today. I think about the possibilities of us having energy security. I think about our ability to wean ourselves off of fossil fuel and, and by doing that, save for an exchange. So I am excited. I feel proud. That's another feeling I have. I feel proud that we have a utility that's progressive and is leading in the transformation and doing things, and by doing that, cares about my well-being and the well-being of citizens in Barbados. So I'm excited, I'm proud, but then there's a small part of me that's like, hold on, holy crap, there's a lot of change. And a lot that has to get done. We've never done it before. I've never done it before. That's scary. And as customers, I think in this space, we're a little uncomfortable. And there's a part of us that questions what power or influence we even have. Well, I believe 
I believe that we have tons of power, right? Superpowers. And I think as customers, we don't even recognize the powers we have and acknowledge that and give ourselves credit. And I'll tell you why I feel that way. What's actually taking place? It's bigger than electricity, it's bigger than energy. It's actually quite an interesting and complicating phenomena that's happening worldwide. And really, it's a growing tension between two distinct forces, old power and new power. And really, essentially, what it's caused is a shift in the balance of power as we previously knew it. And I'll explain. So let's look at old power. Old power, what's that? So old power is a bit like wealth. You know, it's a bit like being in an elite club. You know, it's closed. It's not accessible to many. And once gained, it's jealously guarded. And all power is leader-driven. And it's all those old, respectable institutions that we know. Those are the ones, old power. But new power, new power looks and feels very different. New power is created by many. It's open. It's peer-driven. It invites participation. And new power, new power is not meant to be hoarded, but instead meant to be channeled. And it's actually more powerful when, and it, and it actually works like water and electricity, it's actually more forceful and powerful when it surges. So my view is that as customers, we have new power. And what new power does is it, it taps into our growing capacity and desire to go beyond participation and go, go beyond consu consuming um, and to participate in other ways. And this phenomena is what Jeremy Hymans and Henry Timms, renowned co-authors for the Harvard Business Review, refer to as the participation scale. And they talk about six elements in this space. They talk about consuming. We're all familiar with consuming. We do that. They're sharing, shaping, funding, producing, and co-owning. And we'll look at each one. Let's start with sharing. Sharing is an interesting one. All of us understand Facebook. I, I am on Facebook. And Facebook has ordinary people like me, there are over 500 million subscribers on Facebook sharing over 30 billion pieces of information every day about ourselves, about other people, about Trump. We're sharing. So we all understand Facebook. And along with Facebook, there's Twitter, there's MySpace, there's Instagram, there's Snapchat. So we all understand and appreciate social media. But what social media has done is that it's amplified the voice of the customer. Social media has provided a platform on which, from which customers can be heard. And what's actually even more phenomenal is that people actually care about what other people are saying and doing. And they spend hours on these platforms looking at what Natalie's saying and what Jehu's saying and what, what, what did Teresa post. We do that, right? So we share and we like to see what other people share. In Barbados, we share as well. We share in other ways. So even if you're not on social media, we love to share. We share in the rum shops, love to call in on brass tacks, enjoy writing letters to the editor. And then some of us, some of us, are quite formal and become interveners in the FTC's regulatory proceedings. So we love to share. We, we share really well. And what happens is sharing leads to shaping. Because while we share as customers, the regulator listens, the policymakers listen, the utility listens, 
huge conglomerates listen, and the decisions that they make are shaped as a result of us sharing. I don't know if that's not superpowers. I don't know what is. That's powerful, powerful stuff. Let's go on. Hmm. The F word. Hmm. Yep, you guessed it. Funding. So I'll tell you why funding has become a bad word. So funding has actually become a bad word, especially for customers like us. Because when we think about funding, we don't feel very powerful, do we? We actually feel powerless. Because in this space, in order for us to participate, we'll need access to funding. And oftentimes, for ordinary customers like you and me, there are barriers to funding. But we need money, right? So normally, when I think about doing a really pricey at-home project, like replacing my roof or doing an extension, I would typically go to the bank or the credit union, this is what we do in Barbados, and get a loan. And this normally works. But imagine the early adopters that went into banks and credit unions talking about renewable energy and energy efficiency, right? The banks are probably looking at them like, me and lending you money to do that. And though we could appreciate that in recent times, the banks and the credit unions have softened their approach, there are still considerable hurdles for us as customers to get money via that route. And those hurdles often deter us. That's the truth. I believe how we can flip the switch, make ourselves powerful again in this space, is to have more customer programs with the utility, like the renewable energy programs, where when we make our investments in these systems and devices, we make them accessible to the utility. And in return, the, uh, the utility pays us credits for the access to that device. Or we produce energy and sell back to the grid, however we do it. But those credits actually help with paying back for the investments that we as customers need. And that's changing the script and making ourselves powerful in the world of funding. OK, let's keep going. So this one, who-sumer, prosumer. By a show of hands, how many of you have heard that term? Prosumer, prosumer, prosumer. Very good, a few people. So I'll tell you what a prosumer is. A prosumer is a special species of customer. And a prosumer is sort of like a hybrid. A prosumer consumes, but a prosumer also produces. And what this type of customer has been doing is that they've been making their mark on the energy sectors and industries across the world. Because what they're doing, they've been buying and installing distributed energy resources. And so what they've done, and this is the ultimate power, is that they've caused the entire paradigm of the energy sectors to change. It is because of this beast that we are transitioning and changing, and disruption is occurring. Because these distributed energy resources, this is the real shift in power. This is the shift away from the paradigm that we historically knew. All power, centralized, power going one way. And now instead, you've heard it tonight, they talked about the internet of energy, a web of energy going in multi-directions. At the very core of this is the distributed energy resources that the prosumers are buying and installing. Superpowers, that's what I'm telling you, superpowers everywhere. And if you're sitting there thinking, I'm never going to have one of these things in my home, and I'm never going to put panels on my roof, that's OK. Because I know under the authority that the Barbados Lightning Power plans to have a community renewable programs for customers like me and you. So even if you don't want to be in the distributed energy space, you have an opportunity to subscribe 
to a larger project done on a larger scale and be treated in the same way as a customer who is on the Renewable Energy Rider program. So you subscribe, it's a larger project. There are lots of you doing it, and you can almost say that you're co-owners in this project, and you receive credits in the same way you would as if you had one of these systems at your home anyway. And that's all in the pipeline. So now that you know these powers, how do you harness them as customers? How do you make the most out of it so you get the most out of the participation? Well, for one thing, I've, I've observed, we are the least organized group. That's the truth. The utilities are organized, the civil society groups, they're organized, but we aren't. So the first thing I'm going to say is get organized. Get organized. Join BRIA, because we are the 99%. Join BRIA. Join BRIA. Maybe you join Barbados Land Power as a customer feedback panel. Join that. Join a service club. There's Rotary, there's Kiwanis. Or maybe you're like me, you just get to PTA meetings, and maybe occasionally you get to church. But wherever you are, wherever you are in your groups, get organized. Table it as an agenda item. Talk about what's happening in the energy sectors. Talk about how it's affecting you and your group. So what do we have planned? What are we going to do with the proceeds of this year's fair? You know, maybe we need to put a solar PV system on the school. But talk about it. If you're not sure about what you're talking about, invite the experts in to talk about it with you. Have the dialogue. So that's step number one. Number two. If you're going to be a customer and you're participating in this space, educate yourself. Educate yourself and demand the right type of information. This is important because having the right type of information will help you make the right decisions. Don't just go out there and buy stuff. Find out about it. Demand information about what is your energy usage like? How do I conserve energy? Find out about what it is that you're installing. That will make a difference to how you participate. And finally, governance. I think governance is something that we need. And, and when I think about governance, I'm not only talking about the energy policy or legislation or the licensing regime, which are all very important. Don't get me wrong. We need that. We need that structured framework to participate and, and transition properly. But when I think about governance for the individual customer, the thing is those things hardly ever filter down to the grassroots level and reach the ordinary man on the street. They don't. So, but I think that genuinely most people want transparency. They want to understand what are the projects that are being developed. And when they don't pan out and they don't come to fruition, people want to know why and who should be held accountable. And I think at a minimum, if those two things can be woven in to the governance structure and the framework, that it will build trust among customers like me and you, and it will encourage more participation. So now you've got all your tools. You've got your superpowers. You've got your cape. So all I'm going to say is get out there and poop like your life depends on it. Thank you.